Hello, welcome to Mystical Adventures. My name is Anne. Thanks so much for tuning in. I have a mystical show planned for us tonight, so I'm excited to get started. We are going to explore the intuitive art portal I've created and the mystical, magical energy of shape-shifting today. And before we get to that, I just wanted to let you know I'm having a mystical, magical, gifted guest on next week, if everything goes according to plan. That will be the show on the 9th, and her name is Michaela Feliciano, and she is a very gifted Reiki master. So I'm really looking forward to having her on the show. I hope you can join me, and we'll let Michaela guide us and, and educate us about healing and Reiki and um, whatever whatever healing education and knowledge she wants to bestow upon us. So I'm looking forward to it. And I just want to remind you, the dream group that I'm starting, it has limited spaces and there's still time to sign up. It's beginning this Thursday at 4.30. And the way you can sign up is through my website. And you can visit my Facebook page. I have a, a video there that talks about the upcoming dream group and a little bit more information. That's Creative Psyche Studio on Facebook and my website is creativepsychestudio.com and that if you're watching this, the actual video, you can see my website at the bottom of the screen, but if you're listening, it's Creative Psyche, Psyche is spelled P-S-Y-C-H-E. It's time to let you know who the spirit helper is for the week. I tricked you. It's not actually the spirit helper of the week. It's the intuitive art for the month of March. I used to make intuitive art portals every week, and I did that for a year. And then I reassessed and realized I couldn't keep up with that. And we all have to find ways to, to keep balance and harmony in our life. So now I do a monthly intuitive art portal, and I create the art portal for the the energy of the month ahead and channel a message from the energy and higher consciousness beings that came through the art. So instead of doing the spirit helper of the week, when I have the intuitive art show, I tell you about the energies that came through for the art for the month. And what is an intuitive art portal? First of all, if you're listening and not viewing this, don't worry, you don't actually need to look at the image in order to benefit from this show or receive the message or information. I'm going to tell you what's on the art and the energy and, and vibrations and messages that came through. And you can always check out my intuitive art on my Facebook page, Creative Psyche Studio. I'm a little behind on updating my website, but I will. And it has some of my intuitive art on there. So what the heck is intuitive art, And Well, as you know, I am a helping healing professional who is in touch with my intuition and uses my sixth sense professionally and some mediumship abilities as well. And the artwork is really a culmination of my artistic, creative, and intuitive healing skills. I create the image and I set, I meditate before and I set the intention to channel a piece of art with energy and images and vibration that is helpful for my audience for the month ahead. And there's a message that comes with that art. And I tell you what message that the art speaks to me. And it's really higher vibrational consciousness of beings who come through the art. So that's what intuitive art piece is. So I'd like to show my intuitive art piece for March, if we could get it on the screen. Thank you, Steve. You are brilliant. It looks perfect. As you can see, if you're watching, if you're listening, you might not be able to see, but I will tell you, this month's intuitive art piece is a cat shapeshifter. Is it a cat shifting into a human or a human shifting into a cat? Or is it both? So I, I created this piece and I strongly felt the shapeshifter vibration come through. What is shape-shifting? What is a shape-shifter? Well, 
shape-shifting is found all throughout shamanism and mythology, spiritual traditions, mythologies all throughout the world. And the basic definition in mythology is transforming from one form to another, such as the Frog Prince fairy tale. That's a great example of shape-shifting in uh, fairy tale mythology. In shamanism, it's the ability to shift your consciousness. And we all shift our consciousness. Whenever you shift an emotion, when you change your sadness to happiness, when you develop yourself and make positive improvements, when you bring out a new part of yourself and get in touch with a part that you weren't necessarily very aware of even, your shadow, and you express it. When you dress up in a costume, when you act, when you reinvent yourself, these are all examples of how we shift and change our consciousness. And most of the examples I gave were, were inner shifts, but you can also shift yourself outwardly too in how you present your body. And sometimes that helps you to transform your consciousness when you make a shift in your outward appearance. But we're going to explore how shifting your consciousness can be really helpful to you in some easy practical ways that you can apply. I want to talk about just in mythology, uh, there's some shape-shifting myths. I mean, there's shape-shifting myths, myths all through mythology. And a lot of the themes have to do with changing forms as a punishment, some other entity changes your form as a punishment, as a disguise, or you're able to be hidden and then gain answers or solutions or power. And I'm going to, and that's in mythology, you find some of these themes. I'm going to be talking about shape-shifting and shamanism as well. But, but just to briefly review some examples of shape-shifting in mythology, all throughout Greek mythology, there's constantly people shape-shifting from one form to another. Zeus is constantly transforming himself in order to gain access to humans and sometimes to woo a female or even take advantage of her. Artemis transformed Acteon into a stag after spying on her bathing. Athena transformed Arachne into a spider for challenging her to a weaving contest. How dare you challenge Athena? What were you thinking, Arachne? And there's a lot of psychological theories about the symbolic nature of these transformation shaped shifting stories. And it has to do with shifting consciousness. It has to do with shifting consciousness. In the Celtic mythologies and tradition, there's the idea of the Selkie, which is a seal that can transform from a human back to a seal. I think there's a few popular movies that explore this myth in their, in their screenplay. And also in Celtic mythology, the myth of Caradwin and Gwion uh, transforming, transforming him and transforming herself. And she eventually became a hen and then ate him as a grain of corn. And then he was reborn as Taliesin. This is ancient Celtic mythology. So there's a lot of shape-shifting going on all over mythology. In Chinese mythology, there's stories about Hu Li Jing, a fox spirit, and this fox spirit can appear as a beautiful woman. Foxes are one of the traditional shape-shifting animals. Foxes, cats, in this month's intuitive art piece, the cat came out, snakes, Wolves. These are some of the traditional shape shifting animals. In Africa, there's the, in African mythology, a Kagan is a mantis and he's a trickster god who can shape shift and he can take the form of a praying mantis. Also, a snake. All over the world, shape shifting mythology. And it shows how it's an archetypal idea that we shift and change our consciousness. And that animals have a certain type of consciousness that can actually be helpful to us. 
be helpful to learn from, be helpful to understand a different perspective. In shamanic, the shamanic approach or definition of shape shifting, the shaman can shift her consciousness to enter an altered state, which just simply means a shamanic journey or a type of trance. And in that state can contact expanded consciousness, can contact animal totems and animal spirits and other entities and can shift into that consciousness. The animal spirit may allow the shaman to shift into their body and to show them certain things that would be helpful to the tribe. The shaman would enter these altered states and engage in shape shifting in order to gain intuitive knowledge about the weather, about where to find food, about how to heal or help the tribe. Stephen Farmer has a great website, drstephenfarmer.com, where he talks all about this and talks about shape-shifting in a shamanic perspective. The question is, how can you shape-shift? This month, think about how you can change your consciousness. I'm going to read the channeled message from this month's intuitive art portal and the intuitive art portal is meant for you to use to look at and connect with these energies that I'm talking about. It's a channeled piece. Um, I also created a shape-shifting guided meditation to go along with this theme and the art piece that's on my channel Creative Psyche Studio. You go over to YouTube and just put in Creative Psyche Studio. I should come up and it's the most recent guided meditation called Shape Shifting. I played most of the music myself. I did the narration myself. And in the guided meditation, you will be guided to meet with an animal spirit guide and to shape shift into that guide's form in order to learn lessons that would be helpful to your soul right now. So that's one practical form of shape shifting shape-shifting you can do this month. Think about just how you can change and grow. This is a month of changing and growing. The spring is upon us. It's a time of changing and shifting. The pandemic numbers are going down. The, the COVID cases are going down. The numbers are going down. And we're having a big shift globally. There's a lot of changes happening. And so it's a great time to think about how you can shift and transform yourself. We're in the sun sign of Pisces, which is a time of reflection and mystical transformation and intuitive knowledge and entering those beautiful altered states of the dream world and the shamanic journey and astral travel. So I'd like to read for you right now the message that came through this intuitive art portal with the cat shapeshifter. As you learn to transcend this time and space, you learn you are more than the shell that holds you. You are a learner, a cosmic traveler, a star. By recognizing your own worth, you transcend many levels of consciousness. Rely on your intuition, and this month, remember it is you who has the power to transform your life. This month, you will be bestowed with power and clarity. Allow the light within you to be transformed as you find new ways of shifting consciousness and making friends with the parts within you which you have not recognized. Use the power of your mind and imagination to shift your consciousness and the life around you in ways that express the true love and divinity that lie within us all. Cat is a shapeshifter, and cats are so mystical and magical. And I feel the energy of the cat coming through this piece and coming through this month to remember to tap into our inner intuitive, feminine, mystical, adaptable side. How can you change and adapt? How can you see the unseen? How can you see things from perhaps a more intuitive, instinctual perspective. The cat and shape-shifting practice help us to honor the 
animal wisdom that is within our earth and cosmos and to honor our own wisdom, honor the divine wisdom that's within us all and to use the power we were bestowed to not just get by and survive, but to live and thrive. So how do you want to create your new chapter is the question I want to ask you. And it starts now. I see it is now time in the show to take a lovely caller. And I am excited to shift gears and invite this lovely person on. It looks like Nell in Nashville. Is that right? Hi, yes. Hi, Nell. Welcome to my show. How are you tonight? Thank you. I'm doing really well. How are you? Nashville, is that where the lead singer of the White Stripes lives? <laughs> Probably. What's his name? Jack White. I, I think he might live there. Big fan of the White Stripes. I think so, too. Now, um, we're talking about shape-shifting and transformation. Do you feel like you've done any shifting and changing lately? Um, yes, a lot, especially just over the last year and recently, I feel like a lot of shifting has been going on. Yeah. So you are in the, in the midst of change and shifts. It's, it's a powerful place to be, can be. So now how can I, I'm getting a message from my producer that Jack White lives in Brentwood, Brentwood, a suburb of Nashville. Oh, lucky you okay. now. You're, you're close <laughs> to one of my favorite rock right stars, Jack White. So talented. So now how can I help you tonight, my dear? Would you like a general reading? Do you have a specific question? Yeah, I don't think I have a specific question. Just general would be great. Okay, let me just tune into your energy, and then I'll pull a few cards after that. Thank you. Well, I feel, I know you said you're going through a lot of changes, but I feel the need for, uh, the desire from you to move or to get out, um, to change your residence or to make some change in your residence? Does, does that make sense? Maybe, make, maybe get out, yes, because we've been at home for so long. <laughs> and make ah. changes, yes, uh, for sure. What changes are you wanting to make? I feel like there's something regarding relationships and your residence that you're wanting to make changes with. Maybe to have more people over or have someone else closer to you or um, to make a change in, in the home somehow? Yeah, um, to, yeah, to update parts of it. So um, maybe I can start a business or, like you said, invite more people over. I see. Yes. And it feels like um, there's some... Finances coming up. I feel like you're you're thinking a lot about finances, and it might have to do. It might be motivated some of these changes to help with your finances. Agree. Yeah. So you're wanting to start your business at home. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Exciting. I feel like you're going to have help with it when I tune into it, that there's a, a big social part. You bringing in more people, not just clients or customers, but bringing in people who are helping you with the business side of it. Does that make sense? Okay, it does. So, and it, it feels like it's in a really natural way that there's, it feels like there's maybe a female around you who would be happy to help you. And there might be a group you could get involved with for starting a business and support in that way. But it feels like there's, it would be really easy for you to get more support here and that that might be really helpful to you. Okay, thank you. And I feel like you've wanted to get started with this for a while, haven't you? 
Um, yeah, so I, um, I actually have taken Reiki 1 and 2, and that's really what I want to get started with. Um, and mm-hmm. I've, I've been able to do a good bit so far. I'm just really looking to move forward with that. Yeah, and you've been working at this for a long time and wanting to wanting to start this for a long time, and, and now you're making the move, and it's great because you don't have to worry about once you start it, you don't have to worry about when am I going to start it? It's already happened. And I feel like you're, you're really focused right now, now, and that you're, you don't want to make a mistake. And there's a little bit of pressure that you're putting on yourself and wanting to make sure that you have your bases covered and that you're, you know, crossing your T's and dotting your I's. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And there might be, you know, like some financial, just feeling like you really want this to be successful financially and maybe a little bit of pressure there. And I feel like the guidance is saying, I pulled the two of pentacles for guidance. I feel like the guidance for you now is about trusting, trusting your instincts, not trying to go too far too fast, but really building relationships with people is going to help you move this business out faster and you know not not worrying so much about the competition right now but just worrying about that you feel comfortable that you have people around you who appreciate you and letting go of some of the comparisons to your peers with this and I feel like as you join with other people it will help you to get the motivation and support and you won't feel so alone because you felt really isolated with this and so when you Join with your peers in a supportive, nurturing way instead of uh, moving away from the competitive way, but, but being able to join with your peers in a more holistic, nurturing, to, you know, we're all going to succeed together kind of way. You know, you might look at joining a cooperative or working in a center or asking if owners of healing centers would be open to hosting you or going to you know, once things open up more in Nashville, going to holistic events and offering offering Reiki services at a show. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Thank you. That's, yeah, I like that. Yeah. And I see, I feel like, you know, your energy now, you're just a, a lot of integrity that you're, you're, you want so much to be effective as a healer and to do the right thing and to do it properly and with love and ethics. And that you're you're really focused on just being the best and just, you know, really refining your skills. And I feel like, you know, another message now is you don't have to work so hard. You have the gift, my friend. You are in the flow of this energy that you're wanting to tap into. It's flowing and you don't need to worry so much about if you're good enough or if, you know, like you have what it takes or, or don't worry so much about the technical skills, I feel spirit is telling you. You have what it takes. What your growing edges right now now is not worrying so much what other people think and getting caught up in the what other healers are doing or how this should look or how many clients I should have already or if I have you know the right plaque on my wall does that make sense it does yeah a lot thank you yeah and the final result is justice balance so you you have two powerful balance cards here And I feel like spirit is wanting you to, and this could also be contracts and legal documents and contract signs. So you might, you might sign a contract with someone to help you further your business here, but it's also about cooperation. It's about team leadership, togetherness, leadership with someone else. So partnership. So I feel like justice is saying, as you can be patient, as you can lay down your plan and just Take it one step at a time, appreciate yourself, know that you have the gifts and really partner with others to get, get the energy moving and get your name out there. I think you're going to find, you know, this is a really beautiful, really beautiful new part of your life. So I really hope that was helpful. Now, thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, that's really great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Blessings. And thank you. you. Oh, thank you, Nell. What a lovely woman from Nashville hanging out there with Jack White. And thank you, 
listeners, callers, viewers, for tuning into my show today. I look forward to next show when I'm going to have Reiki Master Michaela on. So don't miss it. Have a beautiful week, and I will see you then. Take care.